Şeytanir Radeem, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Atiyullah, Atiyya Rasul Aulil Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qadaji, Sadaifu, Miskeenu, Zalim, Jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. And alhamdulillah that this whole way is based on the Divine Heart. This reality of the qalb in which we understand it in our physical dimension as a piece of flesh. And by that piece of flesh Allah is making all these creatures to have an existence. And its reality is from an energy that's not seen. Means the immensity of that secret of creatures and creation, a whole different reality. But of the creatures that exist within this creation, then Allah draws our attention to our heart. And that I created no man with two hearts, and that this way of tariqah, its way of marifa, its its connection into the heavenly realm of light is opening the reality of the heart. That God gave us, Allah gave us a piece of flesh that contains an energy, its source and, and its origin unknown. How that energy comes? gives a beat of a, a qudra, a power and electricity, it's not electricity but it's a power that beats, continuously beats and it is the entire electrical system of our physiology. And its immensity in the Divinely Presence has to do with because we know in the world the form a piece of flesh. And Allah draws us to the Divinely Presence of the qalb. That as you have a piece of flesh that brings an energy not from yourself, you're not something self-sufficient. You have an energy and nobody can say where that energy comes from because they don't want to admit it comes from God. And believer knows that it comes from Allah God Almighty, the one whom doesn't need energy but is the source of all energy, not in need of anything. When Allah shows how fragile our creation is, is that how can you be self-sufficient and think that you are something independent of My Divinely Presence? But yet I can unplug you at any moment. Like a toy and a robot that all of a sudden builds its own AI and thinks it can do whatever it wants, say whatever it wants until its owner unplugs it and says, now you can't do nothing. A sign for believers to understand that I'm wholly dependent upon that source of energy. And that's the tawakkul, that we rely entirely upon that source of energy, that He be happy with us, that He be loving towards us with our loving character. We're completely sustained by that Divinely energy. And Allah gives to us to understand that this piece of flesh within you that is the source of power from My Divinely Presence should be a big sign for your creation. Had you been independent would be very hard to prove your reliance upon a power greater than yourself. People say, oh, why religion? Why are you people like this? Why is like this? If people just lose their big heads and think that we are a creation 
that relies upon an energy source that's not from us. Something is sustaining us and if that beat stops nobody can bring it back. They tried to have artificial hearts, no permission. Artificial brain, you can have all you want because Allah doesn't care for your head. You can put any monkey brain if you want, doesn't matter. They can take your brain out, it doesn't matter. But the heart only belongs to Allah In this energy and this power that emanates within our being <coughs> is the source of our manifestation. Whom Allah loves, He gives to them that, why are you looking at the stars and figuring where I am? Why are you looking to here and to there and to different structures and buildings? And I gave you my greatest sign of my Divinely power and it beats right within your chest, not your brain but that pulse of energy that <coughs> in a muscle that nobody can understand why is it so powerful? That for 80, 90 years they can't build an engine that runs for that long. How Allah even put it in this piece of flesh that's so self-sufficient in its ability to run unless you destroyed it with food and contaminants from outside sources. How this muscle pumps and this energy appears and Allah says, for the seeker and those whom I granted Divine love, they understood that why are they looking out and why are they going to places and think Allah will be there. And Allah gives to us, to the seekers and those whom have this love that Allah gave that, I am right here. And they should be drawn and have a fascination to this energy. And as a result they don't look out for Allah but they should be looking in. And Allah is nearer to them than the vein and blood that shoots into their being. But they're accountable for that nearness. We've talked before when Allah describes, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein, <coughs> it's more a warning that I'm so near to you in everything you do, I provide every beat at every moment of your heart. And if at any time I wish, I stop that beat, the whole world can come to rescue you and it won't happen. So tariqah is based on that reality, who knows himself will know his Lord. And the first place that Prophet directs always the believer to is to your qalb, to have a, a salim, have a, 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 a pure heart, a clean heart. And only through the purity of that heart can you truly cherish the Divinely Presence. For if that beat from Allah is within the heart, how can we put anything into it? To be shariq means how do we put something dirty into where Allah is? And that's why the tariqahs come to clean. The non tariqahs, once you understood these realities, you understand that what big guna that is. That when somebody's not busy trying to clean their heart and that very beat is from Divinely Presence, Allah, 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 Allah. But all their external and all external practices, what value it has? with what they recite, what they think they do and how they stand. Every 
action of prayer on the outside, what value it has when in the inside their proximity to that Divinely Presence is not clean. What they put into their Kaaba is not clean, what thoughts they have are not clean. Because all of them come to the heart, you know when you look at something not right that want and that desire enters the heart. When you eat something that's not right its desire comes into the heart. When we think something not right, anger and aggression, imagine now what anger really is. When Sarika comes and teaches, have good manners, why? Because you carry within your being the house of Allah We carry within our reality this Divinely light that beating within our heart gives us the immense proximity, a door to the Divinely Presence. And my whole life was to be aware of that beat, clean that beat. Clean everything around it so that when the beat is coming the heart is clean. When the beat is coming there's no qadab and anger within it, there's no jealousy within it, there's no enmity and envy of what somebody else has. Means none of the ruinous traits and bad character The God forbid Allah's light comes and should be in the company of these bad realities within the heart. When we understood that then we see the people whom they don't focus on their heart but they focus on the feet, they focus on how their hands will be, they focus on going here and praying this and doing this. But the one whom doesn't pur purify inside what is the value of all the outside actions? Nothing. And Allah described, we come to them and we throw them. And Allah wounds for reality come back into the real inner reality. Understand that Allah is as close to you as that very beat that is beating. It's an energy from His Divinely Presence that He gives that Qudra and that's why everything in tariqah is based on that energy, that lightning, that pulse that is coming what we call the Bahr Qudra. From the ocean of power is beating within the heart so some of the tariqahs they made a sama and they circumambulated that reality because all of them were based on the same. Others sat and made their muraqabah around that reality. Those were the strongest because they could take the fires, the emanation and the dress of its reality. Some stand and make hadara because of that reality and that light because it's all the same because that lightning comes. The external symbol was the Hadrat al Nabi when they form a circle and they make their Hadra. It's an imitation of the Divinely Heart. And from that reality every creature is being manifested and sustained. And the center of that, that that beat is coming is under the authority of Muhammadun Rasulullah Because the oneness, all the creatures but only one authority and one power. And based on that heart is what they call and other people trying to understand the flower of life. This reality of the Divinely Heart is the power to all realities. Every 
lower reality is just a sub section of something. Means the one whom reaches to the reality of the heart found everything. If you reach to the reality of your stomach is lower reality, you reach to the reality of your feet is lower reality. Means every reality that somebody's trying to understand and different people, different types of organizations in their meditations, their practices, it's all of a lesser reality and the greatest reality is the one whom moves towards the heart. And this is why Allah gave to Prophet I'm not in heaven and I'm not on earth but I'm on the heart of my believer. And Qalbin Mu'min Baytullah, if they want to enter into the house of God Almighty to be His guest and to reach an authority to everything that Allah has created, this is the ultimate portal. Every lesser portal is not like this central command. Central command is into the center of that power because that Divine Light is the power for everything that is in existence, animate and inanimate. And what Allah gave to Bani Adam is this immense power that through your heart you can reach. My Divinely Presence, my Divinely Energy but it should be something that we contemplate and that's why the tariqah is based on the heart. The tariqahs hold the door to the realities of Sayyidina Muhammad in which Allah whatever portal He gave to other nations, this is the common and most perfected door to Divinely Presence. That the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad completed all realities and one whom enters into that haqqaiq entered into the central command of all realities. Means the Divinely Heart its key is the Muhammadan heart because these are the portals in which to reach. How to reach to the Divinely power and qudra that emanates from the haqqaiq of La ilaha illallah when Allah cannot be seen, cannot be witnessed, cannot be a partner to, nothing is like unto Allah but its qudra and its power is in a heart called Muhammadun Rasulullah In the world of light this is not the world of flesh and form. There's a dimension in the world of lights and realities in which the Divinely speech of Allah is what they call qalb because the world of light is not the same as the world of form. So when Allah mentions qalb is qaf, lam, ba. And Allah is not of a physical and material plane, it's a dimension not manifesting. And the qalb has to do with qudra and energy that the qaf from Qur'an al-Majeed immense power to the lamb becomes qul, Divinely Speech. No one and no creation can contain qul, not an angel, not a prophet, not a saint. Because of the ocean of tawheed, Qur'an can only come to one whom was created for that reality. And Allah describes the haqqaiq of that qul 
that if I reveal my Qur'an because Qaf is the secret coding of what the reality of Qur'an is. If I relieve, if I reveal my Qur'an to the mountain it would be dust. But who he reveals that Qur'an to is the heart and the qalb not the physical plane. When Prophet was of dunya manifesting definitely the physical plane which is astonishing in itself. But in the world of light and eternally representing that reality that this qaf it manifests in this abode of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that his lisan, the lamb stands for lisan. L-I-S-A-N which is the tongue and the reality and the prophetic reality was created to represent the qaf. As a result it is the power of Divinely speech called qur. That power nothing, not an angel was created to even hear that vibration and it must flow through the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah And when that speech comes out it comes to the ba of the qalb and we said before all Qur'an is in 30 juz like a laser, all 30 juz in seven verses of Fatiha all of Fatiha in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem in Bah. All of this is the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah. From that qalb is emanating this power. That power is the source power for all creation to manifest. It must manifest through Muhammadun Rasulullah and its authority and power from La ilaha illallah. So this is the immensity of the manifestation and haqqaiqs of all creation and Allah gave to the nation because the nation are the ones whom we love and honour and respect and those whom have not come yet to the nation, when they come to the nation that's their gift and entry that come to this door of Muhammadun Rasulullah so that you can achieve the entry into this Divinely power. This source of power, source light, the source entity for all powers. Imagine then the souls that their abode is in that in which their wujud and their soul emanate within that Muhammadan heart. Deep within the Muhammadan heart into the Qudratul Ilahiyya in which the Divinely Ilahi lights are continuously beating. Every source of power and knowledge and reality because we're trying to give the image and its understanding. If we move into that power that's the power that gives every knowledge to everything it's going to hit. Every creature that is in existence on this planet and billions of other universes they take from the same source. This power has to come out, reach to them. Whatever knowledge they want has to come from this power to give them their knowledge, their aqal, their their any sense everything that is functioning, making them to function is from this one ocean of power. And this is the 
immense reality of Tawheed. And the soul of awliya and their students, this was their entire interest and journey is that, let's go to this ocean of power. And as we enter and move towards that power, all the knowledges that that beat is sending out to all of creation, it comes first to those souls. Doesn't matter where they are on this creation, what knowledges they think they have, it came from the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah Whether they're jinn, ins or creations that we don't know. Whether they're creatures crawling, creatures walking, all their coordinates come from this one ocean. And the reality of tawheed when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and was not for the pettiness of our physicality, it's reality. It has to do with the immense reality of the origin of this binary code for all existence. And those whom Allah dress from the haqqaiq of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, they are privied into this ocean of power that make everything to manifest and through it they can manifest and vanish in its reality. The immensity of that pulse and that energy on how everything is connected to that, there is nothing not connected. When Allah said, khalaqum ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard. These are all the descriptions of this presence, everything, not physical, only the physical king. Everything finds its existence through your reality Muhammadun Rasulullah through your heart and through your energy and your qudra that Allah's La ilaha illallah resides within that reality and its emanation goes out. Once it manifests, it manifests as the lights and powers of Muhammadun Rasulullah because Allah is la shariq and la shabi. Nothing can be unto Allah nothing is like unto Allah Once it manifests means it has to manifest through a light. It manifested it became Muhammadun Rasulullah When it's still not in the ocean of manifesting the beat has not yet come, it's from the will of Allah As soon as Allah's qudra manifests it comes out as a am kullun iradan amrin wal irada. All of it is described in Surah Al Yaseen, the heart, which is a description of Sayyidina Muhammad's haqqaiq. When Allah wants to manifest, whether it's a power, it has to be then Muhammadun Rasulullah because the law. The law of La ilaha illallah is there's nothing like unto God, there's no partner with God, there's no manifestation that you can say, oh this is like God, nothing. But as soon as that power manifests, it manifests through this reality. From that everything is… is is realities are opening. When they draw, there's these scientists now trying to explain the tree of life. They take the diagram, does it show up Lloyd? The diagram that these four circles with the center circle. The interact… the intersection of this circle with this circle creates a… like a figure that they call it looks like a flower. And they say the, the reality of that tree of life 
or that flower of life and we have it in the Qalb book and then they draw it similar to this. With the intersecting points of these circles from the levels of the heart They say, oh this is a 6,000 year old knowledge that we have to open its realities. And they go into many other things. Its reality was brought by Sayyidina Muhammad and the completion of its understanding is by Sayyidina Muhammad they say that in its understanding the importance of dark matter because they don't understand what dark matter is. But its haqqaiq and its reality is what we're trying to explain. The one whom is trying to understand the physical dimension, the concept of darkness means that what's in the darkness is far more than what you see manifesting. Because the darkness or what they don't understand is that the center is Muhammadun Rasulullah and that it's not dark but it holds the key to all manifestation on the circle of creation. And only from the circle of creation if they want the keys to understand the created universe they think they're going into dark matter and the study of dark matter. But in its haqqaiq and its reality the only key into that reality is the annihilation to the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah And in the oceans of those annihilation what we give as a symbol for them to understand is like a black hole that Prophet annihilates everything because it comes back the same way it came out. <laughs> it's a portal that nothing manifests in it. So if we say from La ilaha illallah it moves through a non-manifest state and as it moves through the reality and haqqaiqs of Prophet in what looks like a blackness what they call dark matter but it's actually what? Fana. And that which comes out of fana and begins to manifest is the secret of creation. It's not just appearing from nowhere, it's coming from the desire of Allah through the aqfa reality of Prophet through the oceans of annihilation, the not yet witnessed. So that which is in this darkness is far greater than what is manifested. And as soon as it begins to come out it begins to manifest but you have to take the same door back. That if you're in the world of form and you say, I want to un uncover the secrets of this universe, well you have to go back through the same door. So you come to the tariqahs and say, well now that you manifested, if you want to go back towards the original state we have to teach you how to break your manifestation. So you come to the tariqahs to be effaced, broke down nothing, nothing, trained to be nothing, trained to be nothing. As a state of being nothing all of what we taught for binary code. The world that shaitan teaches you to be on, you're the one. And the people whom are arrogant and feel themselves the one, they see nothing of Divine Presence, they see nothing. If we come and teach to be nothing, the more you practice in being nothing the more you begin to see the one. 
The first one that you see is Muhammadun Rasulullah Only the humble enter through the door of ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad because they're not trying to compete with Rasulullah This is the first states of humility. They follow their shaykhs, they follow their guides for the love of Prophet As they begin to love and have this immense ishq their arrogance melts and should be melting if they're learning an appropriate way of how to connect to that presence and feel that true presence that how could I ever think I was anything in the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah Not my wealth, not my knowledge, not anything of my family status, no name, no title means anything in the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah Nothing. So then this is now the first process of this nothingness and annihilation. Why? Because Prophet is al-Mahi, the one whom crushes everything. Crushing everything is this is the symbol of the blackness. Why they're in black jubbas? Why you see them with black turbans? For the haybah of the aqfa reality that anything that manifesting must come through Muhammadun Rasulullah and anything trying to go back to La ilaha illallah must be obliterated and brought to nothingness like a dust. As a result of the one whom understood that reality, if they enter into nothingness and they enter into the fana and annihilation, they've now entered back into the powers and power oceans. And Mawlana Shaykh would describe that these Sultanul Awliya, when they say Sultanul Awliya, they're not sitting on this earth and playing. They're giving us an awareness that, no my soul is in that ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah was annihilated into nothingness and as a result my existence is in this ocean of baqa in which everything is manifesting and Allah has brought my awareness into all of it. And as a result I have access to all the hearts of creation, Mawlana Shaykh would describe. The station of Sultanul Awliya has access to the heart of every creation in existence. And people think from the physical phase or physical dunya, how, how? Because they don't understand. If you go back into the origin, back to the lightning, back to the ocean of power, it's that same one room. One power source that is powering all of creation in whatever direction of this circumference. The one whom sits into that heart, into that room of power has access to ulumul awwaleen wa akhireen. Then if Allah wound for them they have access to the hearts of all creation. Whether it's an animal or creature, whether it's a human and whether it's a jinn. Whatever Allah created it's manifesting from that ocean of power. And the one who enters into that room and into that authority is gaining access into the immensity of these oceans of power. They call the, the flower of life, it's the heart of life that to reach back to the Divinely heart through the prophetic heart is the door of the Adamic heart. And the study of that heart and power and to reach back to that qudra is only held into the hands of the tariqah. And I think now only Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, at least from what we understood and know if there's others, alhamdulillah for them. Subhana Rabbi Ya Rabbul Izzati Amma Yasifoon, Assalamun Al Mursaleen, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa, Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, 
Please support the button below, the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.